Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at caustics. And we are going to be trying to recreate this image that I created over here with these caustics in the pool. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so here we are in 3ds Max. This is uh, our scene. We have uh, this scene lit by a standard HDRI, as you can see over here. And we are going to be working in this space over here. So we're going to start by pressing C and jumping into our camera. I'm going to press F3. And here we have our plane. This is a basic plane that I've created, as you can see over here. It's nothing special about it, just a flat plane that's got uh, some subdivisions in it. That's going to be for our displacement map. So just going to undo that and we are going to start first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to open our interactive renderer so we can see all the steps in the process so as you can see at the moment i just have a basic material applied to this plane and it's just rendering white and before we start with our water material, the first thing we need to do is we need to go to rendering and we go to enable our caustic solver. And we are going to take caust uh, caustics from environment because our scene is lit by an HDRI and that's uh, our source of light. So the environment is our source of light. So we're going to check that yes. And for the moment, we can leave that on the side. And now what we are going to do is we are actually going to start preparing our material for the water. Uh, the, in the new Corona, there are presets over here, but it's a lot better to create your own materials and learn what the different settings do instead of just using presets because sooner or later you're going to come short and you're going to have some problems. So. Uh, we have our basic material over here, so we are going to start with that. Uh, the first setting that we are going to change is the index of refraction, that's the IOR. Each different material in the world has a different index of refraction. You can go in the in, on the internet and check, uh, type in uh, index of refraction chart, and that will give you a list of all the different materials uh, in the world and give you a specific number of uh, whatever the index of refraction is. And I know off by heart that uh, um, water is 1.33. So that's going to be our first setting. Next thing we're going to change is the roughness. Obviously water is not rough, it is smooth. So we're going to set that to zero. And as you can see over here, it's starting to become shiny and reflective. Next thing, an isotrope, we're not going to do anything with that because that is for metals. And we're going to check uh, refraction. Refraction is transparency. So that we need to check and we are going to add fully transparent. So now, as you can see, that has changed our material to be fully transparent which is looking transparent. And now what we are going to do is we're going to add a little bit of a tint to the water and we are going to come down to media options and we are going to start by adding an absorption color. So I have already tested a few of these colors and I know what color I want. So we're just going to go into the RGB and we're going to type 77 and 146 and 129. And for me, that color works pretty good. And then we need to set our distance, which for me is around 3000. So now we can see that we are starting to get a little bit of color in our water and it's starting to look more like a tropical type pool. Next thing that we are going to do is we are going to come and we are going to add a displacement modifier on top of this plane 
because what creates caustics is the actual ripples in the water. Usually if you have a flat pool, that's almost like a mirror. You don't get, uh, you don't get your caustic. So you need to make sure that your water is rippled. And that's why we are going to be applying a Corona displacement modifier on top of this. You need to make sure that whatever geometry you have, um, you're applying your displacement modifier to is subdivided. So it has something to work with. So we are going to go to our modifiers list. And so we're just going to come down and we're going to go to Corona displacement modifier. We're going to keep that like that. And now to get those ripples, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a noise map into this slot over here. So we're just going to come to here and that's going to give us a noise map. Okay. And what we need to do now is we need to actually copy this noise map to here so that we can actually see what it is, what's happening inside there. Okay. So this is our noise map. So the areas that are in white are going to be higher and the areas that are dark are going to be lower. Next thing what we are going to do is we're going to adjust the size of this. So I'm going to start with something around 200. That's going to reduce the size of the map. One thing I'm just going to check inside of our material is we need to enable core sticks over here. And once we have enabled the core sticks within the material, we should start to see them in the pool. So now you can see that we're starting to get some uh, light core sticks uh, in the water over here. What we can do is we can increase the contrast of this image. That's going to give us a more uh, kind of uh, defined effect. So we're going to enable this color map. We're going to add a point over here and over here and we are going to move them this one up and this one down and you see there's more contrast in the image now and we're going to have a look at what that looks like that's already starting to look good so what you can do now is you can start to play with the size of the uh, noise. So if we go to a size of 50, for example, the acoustics will be much smaller. So you can play around with that and that will give you the desired result. Another option is to go to Chaos Phoenix and you can export a bump map from um, Chaos Phoenix and the bump map that you get from Phoenix can create more variation inside of the water, for example. So it's going to give you certain areas that are smooth and certain areas that are ripply and it'll give you a more natural effect. But uh, as we can see, this effect is a little bit too uh, small. So this looks more like a jacuzzi or something. But if we go up to 150, for example, it should give us a better result. Also, you can play around with the uh, max level in the displacement, which will uh, affect how, how high the ripples are essentially in your scene. All right, and that's looking really good. So I think that's it for this lesson. If you guys enjoyed that, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a good day. Ciao, bye.